Long, long ago, an angel descended upon earth. She was pure and virtuous and could do no wrong. All day and all night, the angel would wander from place to place, helping those in need. Until one day, she was discovered by a demon, a gruesome monster that could turn legs to jelly and hearts to stone. The demon, angered by the angel's virtuous nature, cursed her and took away her voice. Every year after that, the demon would return on a dreaded night to strengthen the curse on the angel's voice. When I was eight years old, I was called lazy by a teacher for not being able to speak in front of a class. She called me over to the front of the classroom and asked me a question. I, I, I knew the answer. I knew the answer, but every time I opened my mouth, my voice shook and my hands trembled and my heart thudded violently and I couldn't breathe. And after five unsuccessful attempts to answer her, my teacher looked at me with disdain, shook her head and called me lazy. I, 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 I didn't know what to do. Sometimes teachers don't realize, sometimes adults don't realize the damage they can cause to a child's psyche when they label them because those words stayed with me throughout. It may not seem like a very, it may seem like a very trivial incident, but those words echoed in my head each time I sat alone during class, each time I tried to raise my hand to answer in class, but I couldn't because I was scared and my body froze. Terrified to look people in the eye, hands trembling under my jacket, unable to breathe, drenched in cold sweat and plagued by monstrous pangs of nausea. I never associated any of these feelings of crippling fear or panic to social anxiety. I associated them to being lazy. Because when, a chi when, child when children are labeled, they often grow up believing that their label is their identity for a mind that is still in the process of developing. It may be incomprehensible to a child that an adult may label them incorrectly because we're so often taught through indirect gestures and unsaid rules that adults are always right. Which is why when children are labeled, there is a possibility that the child may spend their entire life believing that they're stupid or lazy or worthless or intelligent, or brave, or kind. Over the years, I learned to view being quiet as being weak. I conditioned myself to view my achievements and my self-worth in terms of how successfully I was able to force myself to speak to people. Even when I was absolutely petrified to even look them in the eye, I convinced myself that it, it didn't matter if I was unhappy as long as I was managing social interaction with people who, in reality, made me feel nothing but anxious. But mostly, I believe that social anxiety defined me, that it made me a weak, ignorant, and incompetent person. And that's how I felt for a very long time, and that is still how I feel today. For years, I felt like I had no real friends. That is, until theater came into my life. The S stands for the fact that theater gave me a platform, a platform to express, a platform to communicate. And the P indicates that I could be everything and nothing I ever wanted to be all at once. And it was okay. And the A comforts me with the knowledge that I could be Antigone rising up against the might of a state to protect the dignity of her dead brother. Or I could be Shylock who lost everything because of his cruel ways. Or I could be Darcy Snellgrave, breaking away from societal ideas of morality and boundaries. I could be anyone I wanted to be. The sea holds some of my darkest moments. Days where I was tired of being the misfit in every situation, tired of the trembling hands and the parched throat and the feeling of being invisible. And I'd return home only to act out a scene from the Greek tragedy Antigone. And gradually, as I became a young girl who was about to lose everything in her fight for rights, the E symbolizes that I was liberated of my own anxieties and fears and insecurities. For a few minutes, 
I was okay. S P A C E. Theater gave me a space, a space to be, because for a few minutes, the walls of my home were my audience, and the world stopped turning, and all was silent. And for the first time, my voice is being heard. The real paradox lies in the fact that theater helped me lift the mask I was constantly wearing. It helped me to stop acting, to stop pretending. The word catharsis has been defined as the release of powerful emotion, which is exactly what happened the first time I acted. All those years I'd spent unwillingly acting out a role, forcing myself to hide behind a thinly veiled facade of what will people think. But now, for the first time, I was voluntarily playing a part. For the first time, I was in control of the way I acted, of the way I spoke, of the way I behaved. And it was this realization that made me stop pretending to be someone I was not in my everyday life. It was this realization. Because theater did not magically cure my social anxiety, and it, it definitely didn't make it stop existing. But it made me feel something that I hadn't felt in a very, very long time. It made me feel like I had a voice, an identity, even if just for a few minutes. And that was the most liberating feeling I've ever experienced. Dear shy person, I hope you know that your voice is important. I hope you know that it's OK to speak up. It's OK to be heard, even if your voice shakes. Dear theater, thank you for being my friend. When I was in the ninth grade, I began to question ideas about gender and sexuality. What does having a gender identity even feel like? How does one figure out their sexual orientation on the basis of something as arbitrary as attraction towards someone else, something that could be experienced in so many different ways by so many different people? At the time, there were about 51 recorded gender identities but I simply didn't understand how I was supposed to feel to be able to label myself as any of them. What does being non-binary feel like? What did being transgender feel like? Would I be agender if I felt like I had no gender? Or could I consider myself agender if I simply didn't wish to conform to societal norms and expectations? I didn't know. I was baffled. About a year and a half ago, as part of a summer course, I watched multiple theater performances by theater artists of diverse gender identities and sexualities. And what I noticed was that at the start of every performance, I looked at the performers with a sense of bigotry, and I noted all the incongruencies in their appearance. I rarely noticed the effeminate gait of the homosexual actor or the incongruous body hair that grew on the arm of the transgender woman. That is, until they started performing. And gradually, after a point in the performance, the actors, bathed in artificial light and soaked in the joy of performance, melted into their characters. And that's when I realized that on stage, I, I couldn't see the flaws in their skin anymore. I couldn't figure out their gender identity or their sexuality anymore. But more importantly, I realized that I didn't care anymore. I didn't care if the transgender woman had body hair on her arms or if she was playing the role of a man, because now I saw her as so much more than just that. I saw her as a character. I saw her as a performer. But more importantly, I saw her as a person, someone with thoughts and emotions and experiences. And how stupid I was to think that a person could be reduced to something as arbitrary as appearance or gender identity, or sexuality. So if there's something that watching theater, watching performers on stage made me realize, is that all identities are valid and beautiful. Because if a person's gender identity or sexuality doesn't change the way you perceive them when they're on stage, it shouldn't affect the way you look at them otherwise. Because on stage, everyone is the same irrespective of who they are, or where they come from, or what they stand for. In the eyes of theater, we're all equally naive, equally vulnerable. And that is perhaps 
the beauty of it all. So, theatre isn't just something exclusive to a few people. Acting is something we all do. We all wear masks, we all pretend to be people we're not every day of our lives. In particular, people who do not conform to the conventional perception of what is normal and okay and acceptable often need to wear masks, often need to lie about the true nature of their identity. And since lying is acting, aren't we all, irrespective of age, sex, caste, creed, ethnicity, always acting? And that's when it hit me that theater is in each and every one of us. All of us act, all of us react, but more importantly, all of us crave a space to simply escape to every once in a while. All the world's a stage, their person and the audience, and all of us mere players. And I hope you know that for as long as you live, the stage is all yours. To every person here today, to every person who has ever struggled with finding their identity, I hope you know that our voices are important, our identities are valid and beautiful, and our art is our expression. And maybe you haven't found your voice or your identity today, but someday you will. And when you speak, it will be the most beautiful thing the world has ever heard. The angel, sad and frustrated, appeared before God to seek his help. God had watched the events unfold and he promised to help the angel fight the demon's curse. He gave the angel an enchanted mask that would destroy anything or anyone that the owner of the mask set their eyes upon. On that dreaded night, when the demon emerged to stand in the curse on the angel's voice, the angel slipped on the mask and stared directly at the demon. At this point, as soon as she stared at him, the demon paused, his body frozen into position, his mouth half open. And gradually, as the angel looked on, the gruesome demon crumbled into a pile of dust. The demon had been destroyed. And the angel had gotten back her voice. Thank you.